Okay, now let's discuss okay, random so variables. that's a very brief look so at we've, random uh, variables. If you're working through these in, videos uh, in order, take a previously uh, seen uh, couple uh, extra slides theory, on continuous random variables and PDFs that's a very and simple CDFs as a way uh, to de um, define those random way variables. to treat probabilities and manipulate conditional probabilities and things like that. And I like it because it's it's pretty transparent. You don't have to think too much about notation or kind of um, new conventions in order to do those calculations. So that's useful. However, they're quite cumbersome. It turns out to uh, when we're looking at a lot of engineering problems and random variables are a much more appropriate way to handle a lot of engineering problems. So let's talk about the, uh, the conventions here, which shares the kind of deeper probability with the previous set theory, but in a more convenient format for a lot of types of things we want to study. Okay, so some definitions here to get started. So a random variable is going to be a numerical value and, and here the specific value of that numerical um, variable it can't be predicted before the experiment happens. Okay? And so the idea here is, is with the, remember with the random events we had kind of a sample space and then events within that sample space. Here we're going to use numerical values as the outcomes rather than these random events that may or may not happen. Um, and it, the reason I say that this is so useful in engineering applications is because there, there's lots of uh, um, variables that we're interested in that have numerical values and we just can't predict them. So things like the magnitude of a future earthquake, the strength of a material like a yield stress, the peak wind pressure um, given by wind speeds on a building or something like that. All of those are numerical values. We can't predict the specific value ahead of time, and so it's easy to represent them via random variables. And here down below is a, um, a little graphic I like to think about um, for showing the relationship between these random variables, which are over on the right. and the random events that we were thinking about in the previous videos on the left. Okay, so on the, on the, when we were thinking about the random events, we had the sample space, and then there were outcomes within that sample space that we drew um, you know, circles and we labeled them uh, E1 and so on. Okay, and then there were specific outcomes within that sample space. So with random variables, we can think about um, this numerical values, and, and so we can represent our sample space by the real line in general. Um, so these random variables can take any particular value on the real line. They may be restricted to some subset, like say positive values only or integers or something like that, but in general it can be the real line. And then outcomes are going to be numerical values on that real line. So event A that's sitting somewhere in the sample space could have a numerical value that we could plot on that real line. Right? And then instead of talking about an event E1 or an event E2, we could talk about some range of val numerical values. And I could say, well, what's the probability that my random variable takes a value within this range? Okay? And that's going to be of interest to us for lots of engineering problems again. You know, what's the probability that the, the yield stress in my material is less than some uh, amount of stress that might be imposed on it? Things like that. Okay, so we're going to need some notation here. Um, it's a little bit heavier than the random events notation, but it's worthwhile um, given the value of these types of uh, calculations. Okay, so the, the way we're going to handle this is we're going to have a random variable, and we're going to denote the random variable itself with an uppercase letter. And then when we think about a numerical value that that random variable could take, we're going to use the same letter in lowercase in general, or we could actually just plug in a numerical value. Right? So the idea would be that capital X is going to be a random variable, and then small x1 and x2 and x3 and so on would be a numerical value that that, thing, that random variable could take. So we'll talk about the probability that the random variable x is equal to some numerical value x1. Right? Or I could talk, you know, so we're going to use you know, small x in general is a placeholder, but we can also talk specifically about, you know, what's the probability that the random variable x is equal to 3, for example. Okay, and then because we're not going to um, go for a kind of a full rigorous treatment of probability theory, which would take measure theory to, to handle, we're going to um, categorize our random variables into two types that are uh, useful for us in these kind of practical engineering calculations. One is discrete random variables, that, so those take a countable number of values. I can list out all of the values that that discrete random variable could take. Or a continuous random variable, and that, that a continuous random variable can have an infinite number of values uh, over some continuous range, uh, and it could be kind of the entire real line from negative infinity to infinity, or it could be some range like all positive values, or all values between 0 and 1, something like that. But there's kind of that continuous range, which means that I don't have a countable number of outcomes uh, for that random variable. We need, to, we need to treat those two cases separately for reasons we'll talk about in a moment. Okay, for a discrete random variable, you know, there's going to be this, dis this discrete set of values that a, the random variable can take. So I can talk about the probability that the random variable x is equal to one of those discrete values. 
and then the notation we're going to use here uh, is on the left hand side okay so the lowercase p is going to indicate that I'm talking about a probability mass function or a PMF that's going to be the way we talk about discrete random variable probabilities and the lowercase p is going to be my flag that that's what we're discussing here the subscript is going to refer to the random variable of interest so and then let's label up the rest of this then the, the value and the argument here is going to be the numerical value that we're interested in so when I see p subscript x parentheses small x I can see that okay this is the probability mass function for the random variable x evaluated at numerical value small x okay and this we can list out the probabilities associated with each value of small x we can also look at this graphically and, and the figure down below shows a graphical representation All right, so here's on the x-axis is a list of values of x that this random variable could take we see here 0 1 2 3 have kind of spikes associated with them so those are discrete values that the random variable could take and then the height of those spikes is, is indicating this probability mass function p subscript x uh, parentheses small x and so we can see the probability that the random variable x takes value 0 is equal to 0 0.1 the probability that the random variable x is equal to 1 is equal to 0 0.4 and so on okay so that's a nice uh, graphic way to see um, yeah one we can quickly see which values x can take and we can also see which values are more or less likely that x would take okay and then um, if we've got a continuous random variable we, we change things up a little bit and here the reason we have to change it up is because there's this infinite number of outcomes so I can't just list out the probabilities associated with any specific outcome uh, or numerical value that that random variable could take because there's an infinite number of them so one that's kind of um, practically problematic sometimes but more fundamentally um, if any if those probabilities are non-zero an infinite sum of non-zero probabilities is, is going to be equal to more than one and the, and the probability of the random variable taking some value has to be equal to one so rather than talk about discrete probabilities what we're going to do is we're going to talk about densities of probabilities and the way we're going to do, set this up is to say okay the random variable x let's talk about the the probability of it falling in some range so it's going to be the range between small x and small x plus some infinitesimal um, element dx okay so x falling in this range from x to x plus dx uh, you can also see it down in this figure if we follow along at the same time so I've got x and then x plus dx it's not infinitesimal here so we can draw it but you can let that dx go down to zero in the limit and I want to know the probability of, of x falling in that range and the way we're going to find that probability is through this probability density function so small f is going to indicate that I'm talking about a probability density function or a PDF for the random variable x so we'll put that in the subscript just like with the PMF and then the argument small x will again be a numerical value just like with the PMF on the previous slide okay so but this isn't a probability itself it's a density so we're going to take that density multiplied by that infinitesimal DX to get the probability of falling in this interval okay so the graphic interpretation is that I've got this um, uh, when I'm looking at this interval from x to x plus dx right I've got a, a region of width dx and then if I plot the probability density function on the vertical axis I've got a height uh, up here of the probability density function x f of x of x and so this height of the PDF multiplied by a width of dx gives me the probability of falling in that interval right and so that a height times a width is an area so this shaded region in this in this figure is equal to the probability that x falls in the interval small x to small x plus dx okay so that's our graphic interpretation is the kind of areas underneath this probability density function are related to probabilities of falling in some interval okay and you can see there's this kind of little mismatch here because I my dx isn't infinitesimal but I can let that go down to infinitesimal and I don't have this little problem of this thing sticking out in the limit okay so then if we add up areas underneath the curve that, that's exactly what integration is doing um, and so that quickly leads us to saying that if I want to know the probability excuse me the probability of x falling between some interval a and b where a and b are arbitrary uh, um, limits they don't have to be infinitesimally close to each other 
I'm just going to take that probability density function times dx's, and I'm going to integrate it from a to b. All right, that'll give me the area under the curve. So here, this uh, shaded region is the area under the curve between 4 and 6. So that area would be the probability that x falls between 4 and 6. All right, so integrating PDFs is a quick way to, to find probabilities associated with intervals. And then we can you know, quickly see things like uh, it's the probability of x taking some numerical value has to be 1. Um, that's the sample space is all the numerical values that, uh, that x could take. Uh, and so the area under a PDF has to be equal to 1. All right, and then um, we can also talk about uh, another way to describe random variables, which is with a cumulative distribution function, or a CDF. And again, one more set of notation here, this capital F is going to indicate that we're talking about a CDF for a random variable. And then the subscript and the argument is going to be the same convention as before. So when I see a capital F, um, that's, I'm telling me that that's looking at this cumulative distribution function. And its definition is it's the probability that the random variable x is less than or equal to that numerical value small x. Okay, so, so it's kind of cumulative probabilities of all outcomes up to small x. And we can see that uh, um, it can be found from the probability density function just by integrating the probability density function from negative infinity up to small x. All right, so it's the area under the PDF up to x. Um, and then you can also go backwards and say, well, if, if integration of the PDF gets me to the CDF, well, differentiation of the CDF will get me back to the PDF. Or, or what this is saying is that derivative of the CDF with respect to x gives me the PDF. So the slope of the CDF is indicating the PDF. So these two, uh, CDF up top and the PDF down below, are related to each other through integration and differentiation. Um, the other thing we can note is that this continue, uh, cumulative distribution function definition uh, also holds for um, discrete random variables. I can find the probability that a discrete random variable is less than or equal to some number as well. The integration and differentiation are actually, um, those operations don't work on discrete random variables. It's some summation operations and things like that. But um, in the definition of a CDF works regardless of whether we have a continuous or a discrete random variable. OK, I already alluded to this uh, a slide ago. But uh, there's a number of prop uh, properties that then these random variable representations have to hold. So the probability density has to be greater than or equal to zero because it's it's related by um, two probabilities and probabilities are always between zero and one so it can't be negative uh, the integral of the probability density function from negative infinity to infinity is one as i mentioned before the cumulative distribution function for x evaluated at negative infinity is zero All right that's the probability just by definition the probability that x is less than negative infinity since there's no outcomes less than negative infinity that probability has got to be zero the um, probability of x being less than infinity, uh, which would be the cumulative distribution function evaluated at infinity, well, that's going to happen with certainty. So there's a probability of 1, or that CDF is equal to 1 there. And then as, as the CDF gets bigger, or as the argument of the CDF gets bigger, so for a value of b that's greater than or equal to a, the CDF is always going to be greater than or equal to the CDF at a, which means that this cumulative distribution function is going to be uh, um, non-decreasing as you move to the right. Those are some example uh, properties that we see out of these um, cumulative distribution functions and probability density functions. Okay, and then a, a, um, a, another note here is that we can define these PDFs and CDFs uh, piecewise, right? So they don't have to be all represented by a single function, um, and they don't have to be continuous or e either. Um, so a, a probability density function for t, so we could we could define it as um, having some equation for t greater than or equal to zero, and being zero otherwise. Right? So that's graphically shown here that kind of values of t less than zero have zero probability density, and then for values of t greater than zero, there's some probability density with this discontinuity in the middle. That's fine. It's also you know by shorthand a lot of times we will just omit that second line and just say the uh, probability density function for t is equal to lambda e to the minus lambda t if t is greater than or equal to 0. And we just leave it at that. And then it will be implicit that for t less than or equal to 0 that there's no probability density if we didn't bother to define it there. 
Okay, so that's a very brief look at random variables, and uh, in particular, a couple extra slides on continuous random variables and PDFs and CDFs as a way to de define those random variables.